Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Daniel Rosal here. I want to record this video as a uh, final addition to the moment for my series of YouTube videos about the borders of Jerusalem. If you are interested in Jerusalem and its geopolitics, uh, you might find my various geeky observations uh, interesting. I do think it's a really interesting topic personally, although I appreciate uh, not everyone is going to share that sentiment. Um, I did videos before about the significance of the Green Line in Jerusalem. And um, as I said before, I also at one point intend producing a documentary about the uh, former Green Line. What was called, well, it stood for 19 years, the Cav Ironi. It was, now as people will point out, the Green Line was never intended to, to as a permanent uh, border marking. It was basically an armistice line. But it did serve between 1948 and 1967 as really a de facto international border between Israel to the west, Jordan to the east, and you had one crossing at the Mandelbaum Gate. And as I also mentioned in my previous videos, you see this on the on the map today in Jerusalem on Google Maps, or really most maps. You'll you'll see not one line but two lines, and it creates these this kind of area between. And as I explained, the origin of these two lines is uh, the fact that um, when the ceasefire lines were being put down, when uh, Moshe Dayan and Abdullah Attal, his Jordanian counterpart, met, one of them used, they each marked their ceasefire line and they didn't exactly coincide. Um, Dayan, it said, drew his ceasefire line in green, hence we got the green line. Uh, Abdullah Attal drew his in red. Now there's various permutations of whether it was a marker or a crayon or Diane wrote in a red line and Attal wrote in a green line. The, the one I've heard most often is that Diane wrote in a green line on a crayon and as I explained also in the video the fact that he did use a relatively thick um, drawing device and on a low scale map created some ambiguity as to the course of even his ceasefire line aka the green line. Now, interestingly enough, the green line does appear on Google Maps. A red line appears on Google Maps. And we get the Shete Hefker, the uh, no man's land. And um, you can still see, as I explained, it doesn't exist in Jerusalem today in terms of a marked uh, boundary line. But it does have relevance insofar as that the international community regard it still as binding, even though Israel uh, conquered East Jerusalem and the West Bank and uh, positioned the boundary of the Jerusalem municipality without regard to the course of the Green Line. Um, but for, from the perspective of the international community, when you hear of Israel building illegally uh, over the Green Line, and by the way, I'm not. I'm trying to keep this neutral. I'm not taking. I'm not taking. I'm not presenting my side of this uh, geopolitical dispute. I'm. I'm not. Tr I'm not taking the world side. I'm just trying to prevent. I'm. I'm just trying to present the narratives as they uh, exist today so the international international community will say well if israel builds over this green line it is building what are considered settlements and that's what a lot of people uh, don't understand is that the old city in its entirety including the western wall is actually over the green line and this is um i think rightly a reason why a lot of people well i just interjected some opinion this is the reason why some people think that the using the green line as this border is a uh, problematic because it excludes the entirety of the old city including the jewish quarter from uh, from israel if if that's the way you're going to go uh you can still walk along this and that's exactly what i want to do in my documentary i went for a met up with uh, Marcus James, my friend, last week, and we walked along this road, Ha'ayin Chet, and as you can see, the green line literally follows a road, and we have the Polis Institute here, and not so long ago in Jerusalem, there would have been some kind of a wall running along this road, and this would have been Jordan on this side of the road, and this would have been Israel on this side of the road. In fact, when we went into the old city, uh, we visited a, a famous photography store, run by an Armenian guy and he has photographs of the border from his father and uh, you could see one of the photos he showed us was of the wall you can see the green line here um, met up with Damascus gate and then this street um, here Al Ambaya where Al Ayyad restaurants on is actually just to the west of the green line and then the rest of the street Sultan Suleiman and Salah ad -Din, would all be to the right and there was a border here so anyway i find this fascinating um but now the memory of the border 
is relegated to the memories of people and the somewhat rare photographs that were taken during that historical period. Anyway, what I came to talk about today was the fact that there are parts of Jerusalem that are over the Green Line. And that's not just East Jerusalem, which of course is over the Green Line, but also some of the neighborhoods of West Jerusalem are over the Green Line. Now, these are what are called the Ring Neighborhoods. Eight suburban eight neighborhoods built as satellites to central Jerusalem. And these were the first neighborhoods built after 67. Remote French, Ramot, French Hill, Neve Yaakov, Piscat, Zev, East Talpios, and uh, Gilo. Uh, and in the 1990s, Ramat Shlomo and Har Choma were added to the list. The international community does not recognize Israeli sovereignty over East Jerusalem and considers the neighborhoods legal settlements, but the Israeli government disputes this. Now, we have an interesting uh, conflict in the maps in that Google Maps won't show you the boundary of the Jerusalem municipality. And the Jerusalem Municipalities Mapping Tool, GIS, won't show you the Green Line. So I can't find a uh, map. I'm sure I could export the Green Line and import it to Google Maps. But in lieu of that, uh, we're just going to use the Green Line as a surrogate. So what these, what, these, um, what these are are effectively fully integrated into the city of Jerusalem. For instance, this neighborhood, this neighborhood of Ramot Beit and Ramat Alon. As, as we can see, the green line in the north of Jerusalem skirts just past Har Chutzvim, which is an industrial park. But you can see without, without going east, we're staying on the west of the green line. But we still have these neighborhoods like Ramot Alon, Ramot Beit, Ramot Dalid, Ramat Shlomo uh, that were all kind of tacked on to Jerusalem. And they are within the boundary of the Jerusalem municipality. Now, from the perspective of the Jerusalem municipality, these ring neighborhoods are considered fully functional neighborhoods. There's no distinction. Much as there is no physical distinction in the green line, you can take a bus to Ramot Dalid or Ramot Bet, and you won't know that you're crossing the green line, but these are over the green line. Now, some other neighborhoods in East Jerusalem, in other words, and East Jerusalem, as I explained, the best definition I think that can be given for it is the territory to the east of the uh, green line and to the west of the uh, Jerusalem municipality's boundary. Um, that is mostly Arab or Palestinian neighborhoods, but there are a few Jewish communities, but they tend to be more kind of enclaves. For instance, there's one in uh, Malay Zetim, in Arabic called uh, Jebel Zaytun, and that's kind of a really, really fortified enclave. And of course, from the perspective of the international community, that community and our Har Choma do not differ in their legal status, but they kind of do differ in their in their status. So in, in, in their in their functionality in terms of this is more looks like a planned community and this is kind of a heavily uh Malaysia team is kind of a heavily fortified enclave. Har Choma is another example of a ring neighborhood. As you can see, the green line here uh, extends to Ramat Rachel and then all this territory to the south. We're already over the green line, including this uh, Har Choma community, which is another of the ring neighborhoods of Jerusalem. It's built over the green line. Now, Jerusalemites will tell you, oh, it's now, you know, they might be horrified if you said, well, you're if you live in Har Choma, you live in a settlement. But from the perspective of the international community, both the ring neighborhoods of Jerusalem and the um, and the towns in Gush Etzion are over the Green Line. This is why Gilo is considered another ring neighborhood because as you can see, the Green Line kind of by intersects Beit Safafa or splits it in half. And then Beit Safafa is Beit Safafa is now half over the Green Line, half under the Green Line. But this community of Gilo, which is another one of the neighborhoods of Jerusalem, is considered a ring neighborhood and is built over the Green Line, as you can see. So it really surprises a lot of people when the international community gets uh, throws a fit about Israel building in Gilo. People think of Gilo as an integral neighborhood of Jerusalem, but as I said, it's considered one of the ring neighborhoods and it is uh, located over the Green Line. French Hill, as you can see, um, Piscat Zev is another big one and there's actually Piscat Zev North, West and East. All of it's located over the uh, Green Line. Um, so there you go. That is the... Uh, that is the status and that is what the ring neighborhoods of Jerusalem are. Hope this uh, video has been informative. And if you do want to get more videos from me about borders, geopolitics and other subjects, do please consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.